Hello everyone, my name is Paul Barnett. I'm an architect in Australia, so welcome wherever you are. Uh, we've been in business now about 28 years and our primary focus has been sustainability. Uh, we started in the very early pieces with uh, working with natural biomimicry landscape. We work with schools, we work with government, we work with private homes and private firms. The movement in the industry has gained momentum in the last um, decade, particularly with uh, looking at a carbon neutral world and uh, are following on the success uh, of more recently uh, an improvement in our ozone layer. So it shows that as a, as a nation and as a world we can respond to uh, sustainable issues as they arise. I must admit though we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us at the moment. Uh, our firm has been working in uh, schools, school buildings, um, private homes, um, government buildings, and looking at the variety of sustainability tools and systems um, from passive house, living building challenge, wells, um, neighbours, nat hers, and green star in Australia. The um, the two topics I wanted to talk about today were two of our current um, sustainability systems that both provide a different input into the way we design uh, sustainable buildings and landscapes and the way we monitor them as they are in use. Um, there's some challenges in amongst the systems, but I'll, I'll first of all, I'll outline the systems that we're talking about. Neighbours is the National Australian Built Environment Rating System. It has a star system of four, five and six stars. And government requires this, uh, this rating system to determine um, when they are leasing buildings or buying buildings uh, or renewing occupation of buildings. They want to know uh, how that building is performing and then how that building rates to other buildings in the market or available for them to use uh, in, in government accommodation. The, the Neighbours system uh, has been in place since about 1988. Um, it basically deals with energy efficiency, uh, carbon emissions, water consumption, uh, operational waste, and it's a, a quantitative measure of a building's performance over a 12-month period. What that enables, um, particularly government clients, but any, any potential tenant uh, or building owner to review, is how that building rates on a pure quantitative basis. It's measurement based, it's comparable, uh, it basically de develops a value in dollars per metre squared of um, costs and that translates into the STAR system. It's a good system for government and um, private enterprise to review a building's performance after it's been built and as it's running fully occupied. Whereas Neighbours is a quantitative measure of a building's performance, uh, it's very specific and it's data driven. Um, the Green Star system is a system that sets out, I think most admirably, to define a holistic approach to how we view uh, buildings and the landscape environment and to look to connect not only the building and its setting, um, but a connection with the um, immediate urban landscape and a connection back out through the resource trail. And it, it does this um, in some ways quite effectively, in other ways it's still on the journey to becoming effective. Uh, green Star is, is basically the Green Building Council of Australia and it's um, been put together by people who really care about the environment and want to promote a better building and landscape outcomes. The, the Green Star system is based around um, some 41 uh, um, credit systems 
and the resulting star system is how each of those credit areas have um, either a qualitative or a quantitative measure applied against the available points. So the aim then is, is not only to gather whether it's say a four star, five star or six star a building in design and then finally in certification. So it, it's the design certification, it leads to um, a building potential and then the certification is carried out once that the building is complete. Uh, Neighbours, on the other hand, is looking at 12 months of the operation of a building. Um, Green Star, in my mind, is giving industry and building owners and, um, and the public um, a holistic overview of what's possible and then it's looking to implement this through the design and construction phase and then operational phase. So it, it covers um, a myriad of areas um, as opposed to neighbours, which is just back at those four areas, energy, carbon, water and waste. The beauty of the Green Star system is that what it sets out to do is to create a holistic approach to the, the sourcing, resourcing, fabrication, supply, delivery, um, and um, manifesting of a building and landscape project that covers all aspects of uh, nature and humanity, community and society, and indigenous culture. Um, what it's trying to do, in, in, and I think it's doing it most effectively, is it's starting to put together a system that can be developed and built upon. There's been a lot of work done already. Uh, I first uh, did the Green Star course some 10 years ago, and um, we were doing that to develop um, the skills and the checklisting uh, for school buildings. <clears throat> Since that time, we've worked on Living Building uh, Challenge, um, following up that set of, of um, parameters that is more, with, more involved with community and nature. And then also, uh, in the last couple of years, Passive House. And Passive House is a very effective uh, approach to building envelope and comfort. Each of them bring uh, something to the agenda of um, doing what we do better and also dealing with sustainability. And it's leading towards what is the current trend uh, and the current um, leading edge of sustainability, which is regenerative design. And I'll talk about more of that later. Back to Green Star. Green Star, whereas Neighbours has um, energy, carbon, water and waste as its four key elements that are assessed um, quantitatively. They're measured and the buildings are then rated and are comparable. And that's the beauty of the Neighbours system. They give you an opportunity to see how does this building compare to that building. And that um, rating is, uh, uh, can be renewed every 12 months and it's based on the previous 12 months um, data of actual use uh, in a fully tenanted building. And that's, that's its benefit. It's looking to move into other areas, but for uh, commercial office buildings, um, that, is, that is at the moment its primary um, purpose and it's a very effective purpose. And it, it, it differs from Green Star and it provides that opportunity to compare buildings operation uh, in use. Uh, whereas Neighbours has four elements they're looking at, energy, carbon, water and waste, Green Star has 39 credit points that are looked at uh, across seven categories. And then on top of that, there's an additional category in, in, in use. Green Star has seven categories and uh, in amongst those seven categories, there's a total of 39 uh, elements that are considered and rated. The, um, on top of the 39 credits, there's another two uh, elements of leadership, and they sit outside the, the basic seven categories. But that's an opportunity for um, builders, developers, designers uh, involved in a project to demonstrate uh, new ways of thinking and to lead others in other projects um, and promote even better outcomes. So if you look at uh, Neighbours as providing 
a reference tool to compare building performance in use. Uh, GreenStar is providing the opportunity for people to develop uh, buildings from a holistic viewpoint and they can choose from the seven categories uh, provided they meet a base level of performance which is equivalent to what we call in Australia the National Construction Code. Previously it was the Building Code of Australia but the National Construction Code sets up a base level, a base standard for um, the performance and construction of a building. And that's to, that's to comply with health, amenity, access, structure, etc., energy use. And um, that base level is considered a must in the Green Star system. You must achieve those minimum levels as defined by location in Australia, by the National Construction Code. And then the, the percentage points or the points that you go towards obtaining a four star, five star or six star green star building and landscape project are built on top of those minimum performance requirements. Now, the categories of green star um, cover the following areas. Category one is responsible work. Category two is healthy. Category three is resilient. Category four is positive. Category five is places. Category six is people. Category seven is nature. Category seven is nature. And then the leadership category is um, beyond those seven categories. Now, the thing about the categories is, whereas Neighbours is working purely on a measurement-based result, Green Star relies on an assessment of each category and the credit points within those categories, either as a, measure, a measured item, or uh, which is a quantitative item, or a subjective or qualitative response. For example, if you, um, if you choose to rate the performance of the building in how it might um, deliver your relationship with nature. One of the beautiful qualities of Green Star is that it sets in place a, a system where each area can develop and it looks um, to work across construction, resourcing, people, nature, um, community within the building, community around the building, and then the functioning and running of the building over time. So whilst the star rating system is made of both quantitative and qualitative criteria, um, part measured, part subjective, uh, it, it's setting up in the consciousness of both the industry, the suppliers, contractors, um, developers, building owners and government. It's setting up, in my mind, a way of um, laying out a structure towards more and more sustainable practices, ultimately more and more to regenerative practices, and in so doing is raising awareness about all those people involved in any aspect of the design and procurement and engagement and construction of built the built environment. And that starts to lead um, others to start to consider how we are doing business. So coming back again to what Green Star is built upon, Green Star is built upon um, a building and landscape reaching the level of the National Construction Code. It's built to that level and then it's enhanced. Green Star is designed to meet the minimum requirements of the National Construction Code. And then through the um, categories and credits, um, we have the ability to enhance each area. Once you've got that in place, um, there's an unlimited amount of development that can be achieved under a, a system like Green Star. For example, Green Star, I think, is like a sponge and um, it's, it's enabling other systems to be accommodated with, within the Green Star umbrella. Neighbours is used under Credit 22 about energy use. And so you can directly import neighbours' um, ratings and, uh, and data 
into that particular component of Green Star. I have um, I understand that Green Star is also promoting um, the possibility and opportunity for Living Building Challenge and um, Passive House to be included in the system. Uh, when I talked about possibility, um, I, I can refer, for example, to one of the one of the um, aspects or under the category healthy. Green Star gives the possibility of developing a quant quantitative measure uh, of performance uh, and resourcing and material selection and construction systems. And it also enables the designers and the developers to consider qualitative enhancements to um, the building's use, uh, the building's function, the way it serves as community and the way people and society interact with the building and the landscape. For example, under, um, under the healthy, healthy category, um, one of the credits, credit 15, is connection with nature. So there's no baseline criteria in the National Construction Code. Basically, the National Construction Code sets up a base level of safety and compliances. Um, Green Star builds on top of that and builds outside of that as well. So connection to nature um, in, in our work in uh, schools, for example, we understand that um, the latest pedagogy in education across the planet is um, the term no child inside. And what that's alluding to is the benefit of a child's development by interacting in nature. All of our playground work now is natural biomimicry with, with all natural materials. There's no, um, there's no use of fabricated elements. It's all trees, plants, rocks, soil, sand, stone, insects, lizards, butterflies, frogs. The whole aim is for children to develop and grow in a natural environment as we have for thousands and thousands of years. And what, what this particular part of um, Green Star is doing under healthy and also under the other category under nature is giving an opportunity and a focus to reconnect within the building and outside the building with uh, a natural environment. And it's dem been demonstrated um, through peer-reviewed science review and medically, psychologically, socially, that natural environments contribute to our health and well-being. They also, they also contribute to the health of the planet. So one of the, um, one of the credit points in Green Star, for example, encourages um, this, this connection with nature. So the, the credit achievement under Credit 15 talks about the building will provide views, include indoor plans and incorporate nature-inspired design. And this, this is an achievement that brings it above um, the National Construction Code. The National Construction Code does not address these issues, connectivity with nature. Um, to create exceptional performance, um, they're basically nominating 5% of the building's floor area or site area, um, whichever is greater, is allocated to nature in which occupants can directly engage. So basically, Green Stars are um, encouraging this connection with nature, with real nature, with um, nature that um, intrudes into the building or connects to the building. And this builds on what we understand is behind the health and well-being of people. In fact, in some cultures, um, such as the Japanese, the nature of health and longevity is linked to social connection, physical activity and connection with nature. And that's um, described very aptly under the notion of ikigai, um, which is a system that enables people to be well throughout uh, the generations. So Green Star is, is setting up a system where every element of the system each of the categories can be developed further. Um, although there's a credit and point system, the credit and point system that determines a star rating is, is peculiar and particular to that particular project and it ultimately will be particular to that site. Um, with embodied energy, embodied energy is a measure of the life of uh, resources, renewable and non-renewable, from the moment they are acquired 
whether it be through uh, mining, through uh, harvesting, uh, then through transport, then through um, fabrication machining, um, then through transport again to site or to um, uh, second level workshops, uh, and then to site, then built into the building complex. And then at the end of the life of the building, the embodied energy is then um, picked up to have a look at what is the cost and time and energy required to disassemble and then uh, distribute uh, that material through either recycling or reuse or return to earth. The, um, the complexity of embodied energy is referred to in the Green Star system, uh, the challenge in calculating embodied energy is that every site for the same building design and for the same materials will yield a different embodied energy value because of the distance it must travel. Um, one of the concerns we might have in the system of moving towards um, carbon neutral or zero carbon in our built environment, which is encouraging both neighbours and green star, is that we are, we are reliant on energy production from renewables. So um, at the moment, we've got energy production from coal, uh, nuclear, wind, solar, uh, gas, water, hydro, and um, the value and the diversity of these resources to generate power um, have a, a bigger picture outside the way they're actually produced. Um, more recently, peer-reviewed research into photovoltaics is suggesting that their lifespan of 20 to 30 years then has an end, uh, an end date where that resource is either recycled or re, um, renatured to be reused again in another way. Um, there's some 60 million tonnes of photovoltaics that are due to come offline over the next decade. Um, the problem that's emerging with photovoltaics is that they are a big part of our reliance on zero carbon calculations for our building stock and new projects. Um, the problem with photovoltaics is that they are starting to present a challenge uh, with our um, zero carbon approach to um, building stock and provision of energy because they cannot be recycled back into glass. Um, there's some suggestion that our sources of sand used to make glass uh, and at, um, more recently a high performance photovoltaic that included lead as in the interlayer is resulting in a product at the end that can only be returned to low-grade um, use, such as um, crushed uh, and used in roads. Uh, or if it contained lead, uh, how might that be re recycled? This is just one example of the complexity of selecting materials, looking at their embodied energy and their whole of not life, um, cradle to grave, and to make an assessment of whether the buildings that we are creating um, are performing as best as they could or are they performing um, in isolation in the sense that we have excluded some of the challenges of ascertaining the embodied energy in the lead up to the construction and in the post, um, the post use of the building and focusing more and more on the, the energy uh, that's been created through the building's use. I believe um, Neighbours and Green Star is, is helping particularly for us to understand the way energy is used uh, and minimised in use and how we may supplement that with renewables through the, the life of the building. I think uh, there's still a, a lot of challenge ahead for us to review how we might minimise um, embodied energy in the lead up to the construction of a building. And some of that work uh, is being done now to look at how um, building materials may be grown. And there's um, an area where they're looking at fungus to create wall panels, mushroom fungus, 
um, to me that's extremely exciting because the idea that we could grow um, a, a building element, uh, fabricate it, install it, or, or grow it in place, and then at the end of life it gets returned to earth, um, is a highly exciting um, development in the field of materials and natural resources and renewables. What Green Star is enabling us to do is under this um, menu is to develop ideas in each area. Hence the way Green Star has created a leadership category at the end of the um, seven categories um, for initiative, ideas, and um, leading edge development that's going to be taking us through um, the next generation. Neighbours at the moment is dealing with existing building stock. Green Star is dealing with um, new building stock uh, in the design and, and the construction. Um, but they are building on an old paradigm. And the old paradigm, uh, in, in my view, is the buildings that we build under the National Construction Code uh, uh, are no longer fit um, to suit the needs of um, the sustainability of community or the planet and um, definitely at the moment do not regenerate. Uh, the closest thing we come to regenerating um, in our building work, uh, regenerative design is where we might uh, basically approach a site that enables us to enhance through natural biomimicry, part of the site and in, improve its uh, natural um, viability uh, whilst we're also uh, using the, the energy and the funds and the development opportunity of a new project. So they can work hand in hand and uh, looking to create natural biodiversity on an existing site that has um, diminished qualities until the new project emerges is a great opportunity that is being promoted in Green Star.